You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KCCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rick Schistler, your host of the Weekly Business Hour, also the founder and CEO of One Best Consult, and proud to say that I am also a Silver Fox advisor. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to have a great show for you today. We're going to have a continuation of our soup to nuts conversation with Matt Umboltz and talking about payroll and all things payroll. I think you're going to enjoy today's show. We're going to talk about trends in that industry, opportunities, in my opinion, for you and your business to hook on to some things that can really impact your business and save you some real money. Let me remind you, though, before we get started, that the show is currently live on Facebook. Just go to the Weekly Business Hour page. If you're not there, you can watch the show as well as listen on Facebook Live. So tune in, Facebook Live right now. Also remind you that if you have a question, a concern, uh, or if you have a business issue you want to talk about anytime during the show or after the show, simply email me. Jot down my email address. I'm always open to getting questions. Love to converse with people about all things business. Address one, that's the number one, best consult at gmail.com, or if you're more inclined to talk on the phone, feel free to call me at 832-699-2132. My encouragement to you at this point, sit back, grab your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we talk about everything business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. And let's get started with the real discussion today, Soup to Nuts, a conversation with Matt Umholtz, founder and CEO of Paysphere. Matt, good morning. How are you? Morning, Rick, and happy to be on the show again. Well, I'm happy to have you back. We, ha- I think we had a great show last week. A lot of good information in there. <laughs> Thank and folks, you. if you didn't catch the show live, it's out there on podcast, Facebook, YouTube on our YouTube page, and literally hundreds of other social media sites. Just look for the Weekly Business Hour, and you can find that conversation. Matt, before we get started today in our discussion about trends in your industry, uh, let's talk a little bit about PaySphere. Uh, last week, I kind of gave you a short shift on that. And tell people what PaySphere is and what it does. Yeah, so PaySphere is a payroll, HR, and timekeeping outsourcing provider. So we specialize in companies to, from 25 to 1,000 employees, uh, and we help them ultimately be more successful. So our model is we, we listen, we learn, we get to know their business on the front end, and we deploy uh, technology and service solutions to um, – you know, help their business grow. So uh, that's essentially what we do. Um, proof in the pudding, we recently uh, made the Inc. 5000 fastest growing companies in America list. Uh, we're one of the fastest growing companies in Houston. We are the fastest growing payroll outsourcing company uh, in Texas. Um, and we also, uh, last year, were first place on the Houston Business Journal, best places to work. So um, all those things are great to, to have, but the growth is really just showing that our model works. Companies are gravitating to it. Uh, they're tired of just being a number with uh, with some of the other guys, and they're moving to us um, in uh, you know large volume. You know, just uh, and continue this discussion just a moment longer. Payroll outsourcing: somebody that takes my payroll information, prints the checks, files the tax reports. Yep. You guys do a lot more than that. Help us with that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, some of the trends I'll go through today in our industry, I use the term HCM. So what that means is human capital management. Um, what is human capital management technology? So uh, we started applicant tracking, um, employee onboarding, helping companies find the right talent and bring on the right talent in the right way. Um, it includes HR and HR consulting, HR systems, so tracking employee records and tracking unique things that are important to your business. It includes payroll outsourcing, of course, which is, uh, like you alluded to, making tax deposits, paying employees, all that fun stuff. Um, And then it actually goes through to timekeeping and benefits administration and benefits management. Um, So performance management, all these things are human capital management technology solutions. Uh, And as a company, we back that all up with, um, you know, our oath to our client that is you're never just a number. I started my career with one of the largest Fortune 500 payroll providers in the in the country. And I joke with our employees and our our clients that I was G257. Okay, that was my employee number. Um, And ever since I left, we vowed to uh, never have a client feel like a number. And we listen, we learn, and we treat them really special. Well, you know, and it's interesting, too, and not to scare off people that have 25, 50 employees. You don't have to 
handle them like a Fortune 500 company. There, yep. there are pieces or parts or modules, whatever you call them, that yep. people can buy into. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and part of our process, and it's probably similar with other companies, but um, we go in and we do a seven point business analysis. It's the first thing we do. Um, typically, our, our front end sales consultants do that. And what they're doing is just trying to figure out what a what a business's goals are and what they really need as an organization to, again, help them be more successful. And then we customize the solution. So it, it is very modular. Um, so you could buy one module or you could buy 10. It, it really doesn't matter to us as long as it's the module that best fits your company and best helps you. Well, and I yeah. think you said a key word for me, you customize. So each business is truly an individual customer, yeah. not a number. Not a number. And the program they have may not exist with any other client. That's right. I think exactly that's right. cool. Let's talk about yeah. human capital management. Boy, that's that's a big word. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Uh, and, I mean, that may be yeah. a college word or a PhD <laughs> word, human capital management. That just feels big. Yeah. One of the trends that you uh, talked with me and communicated with me about was human capital management and what it's all about. So let's talk about the first trend, uh, the idea that larger companies have been doing it and yep. now it's available to smaller companies. Absolutely. So, um for, for as long as I can remember, I mean, back, goodness, I mean, uh, since some of the biggest companies started and started serving that 5,000 employee up market, which is really classified as the enterprise market, uh, those companies have been using human capital management technology to get the most out of their talent, to onboard people faster, uh, to get them productive faster, and really to compete against the SMB market. So uh, I use that acronym, small to medium sized business. Okay. So if I use SMB again, that's what it means. Um, but that technology was super expensive. Um, you know, one of the biggest players in the word, world, uh, Oracle, um, to implement their solution could cost seven figures, um, depending on the size of the company. It's completely unaccessible for the SMB space. You cannot go get that enterprise technology historically. Um, today, due to technology just advancing as fast as it has, I'm shocked at the past 10 years and what's really happened in our market. Uh, it's much more affordable. Um, so companies of 15, 20, 25, 50 employees and up, they can actually deploy the solution successfully and not cost them a lot. Uh, the other piece is um, the back ends of those big enterprise solutions are super complex. So you would hire a solutions consultant or a consultant from outside your company to come in and help deploy that solution because you didn't have the expertise. Today, because the configuration and just how much more simple the technology is on the front end, believe me, on the back, it's just as complex, but on the front end has made it much more accessible to that 25 to 1,000 employee company. Um, and the key there is just finding the right partner uh, to help you deploy it. Um, in the mid-market space, the SMB space, there's a um, you know, you have an HR manager, but they may not know everything about HCM technology. So you need a good partner to help you understand and deploy the solution properly. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. And that's kind of a trend in business that smaller businesses are SMB, smaller, medium size, but smaller <laughs> yeah. in a sense, not the 5,000 employee or even the 2,500. I mean, the large corporation, there are a lot of things available to those people, even to my clients with 5, 10, 20, 30 employees, 50 employees, yeah, sure. a lot of good I guess software is a lot of it, a lot of good solutions for many different things in their business. Uh, look at what QuickBooks has done for accounting for small businesses. Sure. Yeah. And there are other uh, programs out there like QuickBooks. But it's really interesting. Do you find it difficult convincing people to look at this uh, trend, if you will, and, and realize even though they have a s smaller company that this stuff really is valuable? Yeah, there's there's definitely an element of that because it's not free, right? So there is a little bit of an expense. Um, so our biggest challenge is really showing the ROI on the investment. Um, and it's not only money, it's time. Um, in a small business, time is of the essence, right? So somebody's multitasking and trying to do a bunch of stuff and uh, they're, they're just, I can't spend 10 hours a week deploying this solution. So, you know, it is convincing them that there is an ROI. And, and once you you know, get this solution in place, uh, the case studies are out there. I mean, employees are happier, businesses are more profitable. You actually know what the, the expenses of manufacturing a product that you used to never track because you didn't have technology. So um, it's definitely there, but it's, uh, it's a challenge convincing that there is an ROI. Well, you know, that kind of leads into the, another trend that you brought up is that the 
you know, the, the single database use of, <laughs> of that. And again, that, yeah. that made a lot of sense to me. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. When I said single database, I'm like, everybody's going to be like, what the heck does that mean? So, um, yeah, one big trend is uh, for the SMB space for companies to go acquire single database technology. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is the employee record and everything resides on one single database. It's not multiple systems feeding together. Um, so it's a singular employee record, single sign on. You just log in once and everything is there. Every module that you purchased from uh, a provider is there. Um, the difference is in the enterprise space, they do um, typically a best of breed, which best of breed means I have a recruiting team, five people, let's say, and they go out and they do RFPs of recruiting applicant tracking systems. They bring it in and then they typically have in a large enterprise, a technology team that implements that into your other pieces. In the SMB space, you don't have that luxury. You don't have number one, a recruiting team. Typically, you don't have a technology team. So we're seeing S, you know, small to medium sized businesses really push toward that single database and make sure that they get everything in one single spot. And there's one point of contact to serve them and take care of them from the standpoint of support of that technology moving forward. Um, so we've really seen that trend and we've seen it be very successful. Um, and sometimes you may sacrifice a little functionality from the best of breed that that absolutely happens. But in most cases, it's worth it because of the simplicity and the, um, you know, just the, the employee experience as well of going to one spot. You know, it's funny you should say that it, it, when I was in business and even today individually, personally, and what I do, I, uh, I encourage my clients, uh, keep it simple, whatever you bring <laughs> into your business. And I always believe that outsourcing, outsourcing in, in general should simplify what I have to do in the business. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm outsourcing, right? Yeah, yeah. Part of the reason is that I have, as I like to express it, a single phone number to call. Yeah. Uh, when I have an issue in that area or I have want to make a change or whatever. And this sounds like the trend uh, in your area of the payroll, HR, whatever, is, is definitely going that way. Yep. And and the last thing I'll add to that is a lot of the um, the older technologies, which are, you know, some of the largest companies in the world have, um, you know, they've they've grown off of a, a buy um, versus build um, structure. Uh, which is great. You can grow very quickly when you do it. But then what happens is you've got all these pieces, all these different elements of technology that you're tying together on the back end. So now you have syncing of databases and things that happen that are just not helpful for a small business. If I'm big, I have 5,000 employees, we can deal with it. But if I have 75, um, you know, that 15 minute lag in data syncing can, can be a big deal for me. Yeah, you make a great point. I mean, again, I want to delegate or outsource that to yeah. experts. Yeah, that's right. I feel good about. Well, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we're already to the end of our first segment today. Uh, again, I appreciate you joining us, and I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to cover several other trends that are out there in the payroll HR timekeeping process. I think they're very interesting. And if you have a business with employees, you need to keep listening. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Did you know there are more than 790 abused and neglected children currently in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? I'm Allie Stevens with Costa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. We train and support volunteers to be the voice of children in the foster care system. Kids are moved from their home because of abuse and neglect. And we need volunteers just like you to advocate for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit costaspeaksforkids.com. That's costaspeaksforkids.com. 
The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us again, and this is the second portion of the weekly business hour and i of course am rick schistler your host founder and ceo of one best consult and also a silver fox advisor and i think we've been having a really great conversation with our guest matt umholtz uh, he is the founder and ceo of paysphere and we're talking about trends in timekeeping hr and payroll as well well matt we got through a few of the trends that are going on and i guess the next one and one that i have personally was involved in some years ago in timekeeping uh, developing one of the first automated timekeeping <laughs> solutions, and that's what's happening with timekeeping. Yeah. Share with us what you see as the trend in timekeeping because every business with hourly people keeps time one way or another. Yeah, yeah. Timekeeping has been around for uh, thousands of years, right? Um, and, and you probably think most companies do some sort of timekeeping system, but the reality is some of the uh, timekeeping solutions just haven't been up to speed with where companies needed it. So if you think about a manufacturer and I need to track time and I, w- I have this machine that I need to track time to so that I can properly quote that widget to the next customer because I need to know how much labor expense I had on creating it. Um, timekeeping solutions of old didn't do that. So you would see handwritten timesheets on the outside of the machine and somebody literally tracking their time to a machine. Um, also, you have employees now who are just much more mobile. So they're on the go or they're uh, working from home or they're traveling and um, there's, you know, an element of timekeeping just wasn't up to speed for them. Now you have a much more mature timekeeping world where companies can track job cost and labor costs to that machine. And, um, you know, you could even have a barcode up there to where an employee scans a barcode and it punches them into a job. Um, so where technology has come and how much more uh, simple it's become to push down into that smaller business and make it easier for them to deploy uh, we're seeing much more adoption in in that space. Um, with the mobile technology, so uh, workforces are much more mobile than they used to be, as we know. Um, there is now um, GeoPunch, so you can punch in on an app, clock in and out, and it actually tracks a GPS coordinate of the individual employee. And then there's one cooler step that I really like, which is geofencing. So if I had an employee that had to come to the studio this morning here to to work, and they clocked in, and they were actually down the street, it wouldn't let them. Um, so we put a geo a geo coordinate subnet mask around the location, and they can't clock in until they're in the physical location. Um, so that's being able to take mobile, which is very inexpensive. Everybody has a smartphone in their pocket. I don't have to do hardware. I don't have to do a sophisticated system. You just pull out your phone and you punch in. And if it yells at you, it means you're not in the right spot. Um, so that technology is really uh, really coming on full force, and it's enabling. Companies that you know thought, man, I can't. Somebody's got to email time on Monday to the payroll person. Now they're using the app and and deploying it rapidly. It's all real time. That's pretty amazing. I know yep. uh, the first business that I, when I became an entrepreneur that was involved, we we did job costing, we did custom manufacturing, drove us crazy, <laughs> and it never was a hundred percent there. Yeah, people couldn't remember job numbers. They couldn't remember this that. Uh, yeah. it was just, it drove us crazy every month. Cause our goal was to get it a hundred percent. Yeah. Of course, like you say, to bid the next job and yeah. on and on and on. So this is phenomenal technology. And I would encourage anyone listening that if, if you've got questions about this, if you haven't seen it, uh, reach out to Matt after the show and talk to him and we'll give you some contact information. Well, core HR, I mean, HR has yep. been around forever. Yep. Uh, I know some great HR professionals. Sure. They keep up with changes in the laws and, and innovative ideas of how to work and motivate and incentivize. Talk yeah. about the changes you see in the core HR function. So within the core HR, so what is core HR? So 
um, employee onboarding, performance management, and benefits administration. Those are, those are key areas that used to be done by an individual. And we're seeing more and more companies move to an automated performance management process, an automated form of onboarding. So imagine I add an employee's name and email to the system. They get a welcome email to the company with a link to click and onboard to the organization. They fill out all their paperwork. They enroll in benefits. They haven't even started yet. So now day one, instead of that orientation that takes a day of lost productivity, they come to work and they're like, man, I saw that video of the owner telling me about the culture of the organization. It really made me feel welcome. And then I went through all my paperwork. You guys really have your stuff together. Um, and then they start day one and they can be productive and start training. So they're up to speed faster. What does that lead to? Profitability, right? So all those things, now that they're being automated, the HR person doesn't have to do them anymore. So what's the HR person going to do, right? So um, it's moving away from that compliance and that transactional HR. And it's moving into, now I can focus on compensation planning and I can focus on the culture elements of the business. Um, I can focus on, you know, mission, vision, value exercises and making sure that we have the right fit talent uh, for the organization, which then leads to, again, prof more profitability. So, um, you know, I'll talk next week about some of the my near-term predictions of, of HR, but one is the, the HR person of today, five years from now, will be vastly different and they'll really be looked at as a division that drives ROI on the business and drives profitability versus just right now, it's still a culture of, they really just protect us from penalties, okay? Um, and there are HR teams that are doing it differently. Um, and of the future, HR teams are gonna have to step up to the plate and do it differently and drive that bottom line result of the organization. So basically what you're saying, they'll become a profit center. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% I, I believe they can and will. Um, and we'll talk about analytics and how they can get that visibility in the next trend. So, you know, it's funny you say that I grew up in a family business and uh, part of the drive in that family business, our administrative services, which was the accounting, the HR, was on a profitability basis. Uh, and a lot of people scratch their head. I said, well, how can they do that? Well, it was interesting how they found places to save money yeah, or this or that. And it was listed, it was respected, uh, and it was expected. So yeah. uh, that's that's a trend or a need that's been out there. And I have rarely ever seen uh, a business client or whatever that took any consideration like that. So that's exciting yeah. because that allows that business to squeeze a few more dollars of profitability, perhaps, you know, make them competitive. Yeah. Which that's the big thing today. Yep. Let's move on. You've got a data-driven decision-making. I mean, you've got all this data, right? <laughs> yeah. It's there. It's easily collectible. Yep. Uh, we'll assume it's in a form that I, as a manager or owner, I can look at it. Yep. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, data-driven decision-making. So what does that mean? Um, and I, I use the term contextual analytics sometimes. So analytics, you hear about it on... Now, how much does that word cost? Oh my goodness, a lot, <laughs> a lot. And it, to see it in real life and technology, it's a, it's a very expensive word, um, you know, but in, in relation to analytics in general, you hear the term, um, you know, BI, business intelligence, and you hear analytics on, on the news all the time in, in regards to things that can actually, um, you know, crunch data and present things, trends that are happening. Uh, well, within the HR world, there is a ton of data in a system. So, Think about the data you have. I mean, you have all the pertinent employee data, but you also have, you know, what is my turnover for employees that live further than 10 miles from the office? And is, you know, what is their average tardiness or uh, what is their average uh, days away from work? And you, you start to look at data in a different way. So maybe in the future, I can look at data and analytics and I can predict a hire. Meaning if they came from this alma mater, with a GPA of X, and they live within X amount of miles from the office, eh, they're 95% gonna be a rock star, right? Um, based on data like that, that you can actually boil down and, and produce results from. And I know now, well, 30 miles from the office, that's a big turnover risk, right? Yeah, everybody knows that, I yeah. hope. Yeah, they know it, but do they have it in the system? No, no. I mean, the majority of folks we talk to, they just do not have data on it. Um, so that's what, you know, analytics can really do. Analytics is not a graph of a report, okay? In our system, one of the first things that pulls up is a dashboard, and it shows reports in a graphical nature. That's a graph of a report. It maybe visualizes something, but that is not analytics. 
uh, analytics is taking that report and that data and saying, hey, you better put some more people on the schedule for this weekend because there's a big festival in your area. And last year on that same date, we knew that the revenue was X and your staffing was X and you were understaffed. So the system saying, ding, 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 you need to staff more, right? Or it's saying, ding, 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 hire this person. They're the perfect fit based on these other criteria. So it's using data in the system to help decision-making, not just present data graphically. Right. So it's, it's two completely separate things. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's phenomenal, especially in, my, in the small business market, which, as you know, that's where I, I hang my hat, which to me it's people with 100, 200, or fewer employees. But uh, it's mm -hmm. very, very interesting. Well, we've got one final trend that you talk about, uh, socialization of uh, human capital management. <laughs> Let's kind of close on that one. What the heck does that mean? Um, I was talking to our team and they were just cracking up about this because I'm very passionate about it. Um, so, so what is socialization of HCM? So there are technologies out there that are touting uh, that it's very, it's built socially. So it's like on a social platform. So think Facebook, LinkedIn, that kind of thing. And there are HCM technologies that are trying to, um, you know, bring that, those social elements into the HR world. Um, and, you know, an employee can do something good and somebody can like the comment and do things of that nature, which has value, uh, but is, is relevant in a very small subsegment of, of businesses. Um, in most organizations from 25 to 1,000 employees, they still have key timekeeping issues, key onboarding issues, key talent attraction issues. So I just encourage companies to not get sidetracked with the the uh, what we call the sexy stuff and completely forget about the core pieces that can help the business be more successful. Um, I mean, that is the, the key thing. You know, in five years, I feel this will be different. I feel like it'll, you know, technology is becoming more mobile friendly every day. I think it will be a thing. But today, there's such a vast gap in the mid market of companies actually having solutions to help with the core areas. Um, you know, the socialization piece you know, it's cool, but it's not, it's not important. Right. Okay. And it makes a lot of sense in what you're saying. Basics, basics, basics. Take care yeah. of the basics. Keep it simple. You said earlier, like, keep it simple. You know, we, we don't need to focus our implementation effort on getting some socialization thing. So I'll tell you a funny story. A good friend of mine uh, works at a large um, hospital in, in Baton Rouge. They have a couple of 2000 employees. And um, I was asking, they, they use a competitor's app. So I was saying, how's it working? You know, let me see it, you know, show it to me. And uh, she was showing me, she's like, I just look at my check stub. That's all I do on there, right? Um, she said, but HR keeps telling me they want me to go into the app and like comments, right? So it was like HR was pushing this social thing, but the employees were like, you know, not into it. Yeah, so, I just care about my check. Yeah, so how much effort was HR putting into something that it, it, minimal value, right? minimal value? Yeah. You make a great point. One of the things I want to be sure we do, and we're, we're running out of time quickly, uh, is for you to tell people if they've got questions or want to talk to you about a solution, what's the best way for them to contact you and pay sphere? Yeah. So, uh, our website is a, a great resource tool. We've got a great blog on our website where we talk a lot about these trends. Uh, the website is paysphere.payroll.com. Okay. Paysphere, P-A-Y-S-P-H-E-R-E, like the shape, payroll.com. Uh, or you can just call our office. If you call our office and ask for Madam, happy to help you. Uh, the number is 281-377-8144. Well, Matt, thanks for joining us again today. And next week, I'm, I'm anxious to hear those predictions because <laughs> I think uh, if I own a business today, I want to be able to plan and those predictions can help me make and make better decisions in particularly in the payroll area. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to our bottom of the hour break and don't, don't leave us. Uh, the second half of the show, I'm going to do our weekly Did You Know, uh, which will be entitled Following Profit and Cash Flow. And at the end of the show, I'm going to offer you my one best consult tip of the week. Is it time to dial up your business? So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. 
A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. What is homelessness? Have you seen parents struggle to find a job without having transportation or childcare? What about the children sleeping in cars with nothing to eat? Families shouldn't have to struggle to survive, and children should not be homeless. Family Promise of Montgomery County serves the needs of homeless families and their children. Learn about ways you can help and learn about partnership opportunities at www.familypromiseofmc.org or call our day center at 936-441-8778. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host, and founder of OneBestConsult.com and a Silver Fox advisor. I want to shout out to OneBestConsult.com. They are the host and our major sponsor uh, of the show today. I would encourage you, if you need common sense business advice, if you want to join a community of like-minded small businesses, check out our website at one, that's the number one, BestConsult.com. I think you'll be pleased with what you see. There's an opportunity there to talk and communicate with other business people. And of course, I'm always available if you'd like a mentor to talk to you about your business issues on a regular basis. Well, the first thing I like to do after we have a show like that is do a simple recap, uh, looking for the things that I feel that you and your business, you can implement, perhaps uh, get involved in right away. I mean, Matt brought a lot of good information to the table today of these trends. And I think it's very important as business people that we check in with this kind of thing from time to time. Look at where the trends are going so that we don't get caught flat-footed. And as Matt says, there's oftentimes not very much time. We're busy. We're multitasking. We're running a business. Not enough time to kind of sit back and say, okay, where's the world going? Where's my industry going? Where's my business going? And I think he pointed out a couple things uh, uh, besides some $5 words like human capital management, big word, big thing. Those kind of things eventually, in my opinion, will trickle down, if you will, to small businesses. But I think when he talked about timekeeping, again, that's an area that I personally worked in, one of my businesses that I was involved in. Uh, We developed uh, one of the first automated standalone timekeeping systems. It was a time clock. It was automated. It was electronic, used chip power. I'm going way back when chips were first being used in practical devices. But it made such sense because it automatically calculated the time for the business It automatically made sure that people couldn't punch in and punch out. If they failed to do so previously, it put a stop on it. So it eliminated those missed punches. All the aggravations with timesheets and time cards were basically eliminated. Uh, And so I'm familiar with the area. And I think that's an area, if your business hasn't automated its timekeeping to some extent, and there's lots of solutions out there, a lot of them revolve around a computer or a a point of sale device, uh, but they're inexpensive today to give you base, it'll, basic at least calculation so you don't have to calculate regular overtime, so on and so forth, get the exact number of hours down that people worked, the breaks, the lunches, and all that. Uh, at the very least, I think any business that has employees, two or more, wants some kind of system in place other than a sheet of paper. Uh, and again, these are inexpensive. So at the end of the week, the end of the two-week period, whenever you pay, you just simply go and you open it up and there are the numbers for you. So look at your timekeeping solution. Make sure it's up to date for what you really deserve and need in your business. And by the way, we found when I was involved in that industry, 15% plus, 15% plus savings by simply automating features like that in your timekeeping. 15% of payroll. So look at that number. It makes sense to take a look at this issue. I think some of the other things that Matt uh, talked about really were framed in in sense of larger businesses, uh, which I think is great. And again, these things have a tendency to to trickle down. And I think one of the most second most important things 
is the fact that information data will be accumulated over time uh, through the timekeeping and payroll system. And I do believe, as Matt says, and it apparently already exists for larger companies, where it'll even help you analyze the type of employee. I, I think you're going to see some associations, perhaps, for smaller businesses that will help with this, or there'll be services out there. So instead of trying to do your own database and buying your own software, you will be able to outsource that. And I think that's where companies like Paysphere, Matt's company, can come in and help you, that they will be able to provide you information and give you some analytics about the best salespeople, the best machine operator, even the best sales clerks. And we all know that we who have been in, involved in the hiring process, I've been involved in it for years. It's, it's, it's something that we can always use an edge in so we find the right person, as I like to say, square peg, square hole, a good fit for the employee, a good fit for the company. That's a win-win. So I think keep an eye on the analytics and keep an eye on what might be available for you, your company, either an outsourced ba- outsource basis where they can analyze the data in general, say for sales clerks in your area. We already have available to us, and I was working with someone recently on this, information about salary and benefits and bonuses for particular job classifications broken down by area. Uh, And if you want to spend enough money, you get it broken down to uh, cities of certain sizes. So that kind of information is obviously very helpful, already available by subscription or by purchase. You don't have to accumulate that data. You want to make sure that your pay is in line, your benefits are in line, because we're in a tight labor market in most parts of our country and the ability to stay up with that, I think, is critical. So this analytical data is a second area that I would implore you to keep an eye on. Well, we're going to go to a short break now. When we come back, I'm going to talk about, in my Did You Know series, a follow-up on profit and cash flow. Are you following profit and cash flow in your business? We'll try to answer that question for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Lone Star Boxer Rescue is a nonprofit organization serving Montgomery County and surrounding areas, dedicated to the health and well-being of the boxer breed. Lone Star Boxer Rescue is run and managed 100% by volunteers since 1999. Our main objective is to rescue, rehabilitate, and rehome boxers that come to us from any sources, including local animal shelters, owner surrenders, and strays. For more information about Lone Star Boxer Rescue, visit our website at lsbr.org. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647-3776. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, Zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. This is Rick Schistler, your host of the Weekly Business Hour, welcoming you back after that short break. And as promised in our Did You Know segment, the idea of following profit and cash flow. Now, please excuse me if you have already dialed in on this issue, but I frankly have too many people come to me and talk about profit and cash flow, and they're really, in some sense of it, confused. And I want to take just a few minutes to make sure that everybody out there that listens to the show, uh, as I work with clients, the same thing. Profit and cash flow, you know, profit is very simple. It's revenue less your expenses. It's what's left over on your financial statement. And generally speaking, a lot of business advisors will tell you, really don't be overly concerned about your income statement or your tax return. Yes, if you've borrowed money from the bank, they're going to be concerned. But really the focus when you talk about profit and cash flow needs to be on cash flow because the bottom line is, the money in your bank account 
if it isn't already spoken for in accounts payable, whatnot, is your cash flow. And even if it is spoken, you haven't written the check, it's still cash flow. So it's important that you keep track of the inflows and outflows of cash in your operation day to day. Uh, you know, it's interesting. One of these experts, Denise O'Berry, uh, and is the author of Small Business Cash Flow Strategies for Making Your Business a Financial Success, says it is the lifeblood of your business. You know, I meet so many entrepreneurs, so many small business people that they're so good at building a business. They're so good with a product idea, uh, customer service, all these other things, and they really don't pay enough attention to their financials. And that most important element of that is your cash flow. And it's interesting. In the old days, I remember stories about cigar boxes. Before cash registers really were widely used, and people put the cash in the cigar box. And if there was cash in the cigar box, their business was okay. Well, to a certain point, that was true. But you need to think about profit as a theory of business success. Cash flow is your reality. Several quick tips for you. First of all, make sure you get some financial education. If you already don't have it, be sure you understand your financial statements. You understand cash flow. If you haven't done it, don't worry. There are seminars on Saturdays, Houston Community College, Lone Star College, lots of resources. Even online, you can take courses at your convenience using the webinar format. But be sure you understand these financial uh, terms and what they mean to your business. The second thing is be sure you track it. And there's no reason, uh, I mean, a cigar box, but there's a lot of great software. You can set up QuickBooks. And I know I've had clients who were confused about their cash flow and the profit, but QuickBooks, other products available, FreshBooks, Zero, Wave, Sage, Zoho, there are tons of products out there so that you can automate, put your accounting on software, and then you can also be aware of what your actual cash flow is. It's just a punch of a button. Never forget about things that come up, my third point, that you don't think about. And the most important one is Uncle Sam. Be sure you have the cash to pay your taxes when they're due. An amazing number of small businesses don't have that cash. And one of the key things I think to remember is pick your customers carefully. If you sell products or services where you get paid on time, where you get paid in 30 days, 10 days, be sure you pick the right people to be your customers. If someone drags their payment out for 60, 90, 120 days, that's your cash flow. And again, I've seen businesses really get in a bind. Almost every small business is going to get in a cash flow bind from time to time, particularly in the beginning. There's no shame in it. Learn what was done wrong and correct it but picking the right customer or the right payment plan. I've even had clients who were dealing with large companies. They want to deal with them, but they didn't pay for 120 days. So as a result, the client, I said, jack your prices up two, three, five percent When you sell to them, add in. If you can afford to carry it, make them pay for you to carry it. So there are some solutions to that. But again, my encouragement is cash flow is your reality. Make it your reality and be aware of what your cash flow is cash in the bank, cash on hand, available is every day in your business. We're going to take our final break of the day. When we come back, I'm going to offer my one best consult tip of the week. Uh, I hope you'll stick around and we'll talk about it. And that is it's time to dial up your business. Is it time for you to dial up your business? Stick with us and we'll see if we can find out together. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 936- Six four seven three seven seven six. Did you know that there are over 153 million orphans in the world today? The sad reality is 99% of those kids will likely never be adopted. Core Love is an organization right here in Conroe that takes care of orphan children in Haiti, Honduras, and India. We bring the love of Jesus by providing their six basic needs of clean water, proper food, health care, 
education, job skills, and a loving home. Visit corelove.org. That's C-O-R-E-L-U-V dot org. Will you help defend the orphan? Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez, president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. This is Rich Hissler, your host of the Weekly Business Hour. And again, thank you for joining us today. And remember, if you want to re-listen to the show, you missed part of it, uh, then it's available on podcast come Wednesday. You can find it at a number of sources, Facebook, the Weekly Business Hour page. You can also go to YouTube, the Weekly Business Hour channel. It's posted there as well as the IRLoneStar.com website under the Weekly Business Hour. So I encourage you, if again, if you missed part of the show or you want to re-listen, there's a podcast there available for you at your convenience. And I also want to thank our show sponsor, OneBestConsult.com. That's the number one, BestConsult.com. OneBestConsult.com exists for small businesses. When you're challenged, when you have an issue that you can't solve, you want some advice, you want another perspective, then reach out to OneBestConsult.com. Well, this is the part of the show where I offer my One Best Consult tip of the week. And this week, I thought we would talk about, is it time to dial up your business? Uh, you know, the economy's blowing and going. A lot of businesses, particularly here in the Montgomery County area, are doing very well. Uh, this is a trend, I think, that stretches across most of our country. And the question is, is it time to really dial up your business? Uh, and I think that's an interesting question and one that I feel uh, the initial steps people miss. And the, the first thing I think you have to do to answer that question for your business at this time or at any time is take a look at your assets. What assets do you have in your business? How strong are they? How valuable are they? How available are they? Are they usable? Now, what am I talking about assets? Well, the assets that every business have, we have people, we have employees, uh, we have our own ability. Okay. We need to evaluate that is, can we do more with less? In other words, or can we do more with the same workforce? Can we truly dial up our business without adding people? I think that's the first question you need to answer. Second thing is about equipment. Do we have the equipment in place? Do we have the inventory? Do we have an inventory system where we can be supplied on a regular basis and keep available the product that we need to resell or to use in our manufacturing process? I call this the quick check on assets because I think to start as a benchmark to whether you really want to grow your business now is are we doing everything we can with the assets we currently have in hand. In other words, what is our capacity of our business? That's the second question. What can we produce? Now, this can be broken down by employee, so many widgets, so many dollars. Uh, it can be broken down by other factors that might be in your business. In other words, revenue. We can do $10,000 additional revenue uh, in the plant that we're not doing now based on a total evaluation of our assets. This is not a complicated number. It can be made complicated. And if you have access to financial advice, say you have a controller or someone in that capacity, a CFO, they probably can provide that information for you if you already don't have. But the thing when you want to analyze your capacity is take the results of my number one point, use of your assets, and then come up with some kind of figure. Again, it can be we can produce 10 more widgets with our existing assets or X number of dollars, whatever that figure is. Keep that in mind. Keep that figure around. Second thing I think you have to look at it, and when you analyze capacity is what are the goals for your business? Okay, what are you trying to do with your company? You know where you want your business to go. And I talk about this a lot. It's up to the individual owners of what they want. Some people are comfortable where they are. Some people want to take advantage of the economy. They want to strengthen their company. They want to grow. Maybe you give up a certain business, a certain line of business, and replace it during this period of growth with continuation, expansion of another area, more profitable. There are lots of options here, and I think it's important to look at them. Third thing is room to grow and get more from your current assets. What is the market? This is the marketing question, always a difficult one for many people. What kind of market do you have? Can you, if you do dial up your business, is there a market for what you have? And then finally, plug into your current and future business plan. I hope everyone listening has some kind of business plan. 
plug in these numbers and see how it works through the plan. Make sure you've checked all the boxes. My encouragement is if you want to dial up your business, this is a good time to do it. A great time to evaluate what you're doing, make decisions, drop a line, add a line, expand a line, expand your locations, all kinds of possibilities. But start with evaluating your current assets and see what it's going to cost you, what you're going to have to add, if anything, to increase and dial up your business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us today. And I ask you to put a note, if you would, on your calendar to join us again next Monday right here on IRLoneStar.com at 11 a.m. As you heard earlier in the show, Matt's going to be back, his final conversation with us in soup to nuts about everything payroll, HR, and timekeeping. He's going to bring his crystal ball with him, I understand, and we're going to make some predictions, or he is, uh, make some predictions about changes that will take place in the near future, maybe far out in the future in the industry. So again, I think this has immediate implication or long-term impact potential on your business. So I encourage you to tune in and listen to Matt and I talk about everything payroll from soup to nuts. Look for the podcast of today's show on the Weekly Business Hour page of IRLoneStar.com, Facebook, YouTube channel, everything the Weekly Business Hour. And if you get a chance, go to Facebook and like the Weekly Business Hour, and I'd appreciate it because you can set up some alerts, and that way when a show comes up, it'll let you know. It'll also let you know that there's Facebook Live available to you. Uh, We've had a huge number of people join us since Facebook Live became available in the last month or so, and so I encourage you that is one avenue, even on a mobile device, that you can enjoy the show. Thank you for joining us, and remember, stay in touch with what's happening here in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio, the community radio station for all of Montgomery County, Texas. And until next week, my big encouragement is always stay engaged and keep your focus on what counts in your business. Thank you.